Welcome back to your Weld County School District 6 school board uh, meeting and we have just um, elected uh, officers and placed our new board member and uh, at the table here this evening. The next item of business uh, was to be the extension of the signature plate which in English means uh, if there had been a change in our treasurer or president we would need to uh, rearrange the, the signature uh, officially of that district office. Um, those two positions are still held by the same people so we won't need to go uh, to that vote. Thank you Mr. Lidiak for, for that observation. The next item is Educational Support Professionals Day and uh, this is an action item and I'd be glad to have a motion at this time. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 adopt the proclamation declaring November 18th, 2015 as Education Support Professionals Day. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I'd li like to have you hold on your questions or discussion until I read the proclamation, which you may or may not approve. Proclamation of the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6, Education Support Professionals Day, November 18th, 2015. Whereas public schools are the backbone of our democracy, providing young people with the tools they need to maintain our nation's precious values of freedom, civility, and equality. And whereas education and support professionals, education support professionals are an integral part of education process. And whereas education support professionals provide a safe and healthy learning environment for our students. And whereas education support professionals work tirelessly to serve our children and communities with care and professionalism. Now therefore I, Roger DeWitt, serving as president of the Greeley Evans School District 6 Board of Education, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 18th, 2015, as National Education Support Professionals Day. I urge that we observe this day by taking time to recognize and acknowledge the importance of education support professionals in our public schools. Comments or questions at this time from the board? I think this means we love our education support professionals and I would be delighted to sign this if the roll call indicates that we may. Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hayfley? Aye. Mr. Hall? Aye. Mr. Lidiak? Aye. Mrs. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Mrs. Solis? Aye. And the motion carries 7-0. Very nice. Thank you very much. The next item is the 2015 School Safety and Security Assessment Report. This is a report to the board. Dr. Pilch? So the one position that serves the board that we, we do not elect is our sergeant at arms. So sitting in the back of the room at each one of our board meetings is our director of security, uh, Mr. John Gates, who is also our sergeant at arms should we need one in the boardroom. So welcome to Mr. Gates. We're fortunate to have Mr. Gates as our director of sec security as a retired police sergeant. Uh, he brings significant expertise and just trust from our administrators as well as from our, our local police agency. So I'm fortunate to have him here on staff and he'll give us a brief report on our school safety and security assessment. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dr. Pilch. Good evening to you all. Um, President DeWitt, members of the board and Dr. Pilch, uh, thanks in advance for a few minutes of your time to talk about not only the 2015-16 installment of the school safety vulnerability assessments, but a few other tidbits that are pertinent and relative to security in our schools. Um, as you probably know, the school safety and security vulnerability assessments are a component of the Safe Schools Act. They were completed at 27 sites between September 21st and October 15th of this year. Uh, it's a 79 item evaluative tool designed to identify emerging and potential school safety and or security issues or threats. And that tool was uh, placed in your board packet as you're aware. The assessment is conducted in three phases. The first is the school or the building. The second is the policies or procedures included therein. And the third is training and awareness. A category one essentially evaluates the school infrastructure which includes the interior and exterior of the site, uh, ingress and egress, any neighborhood factors, uh, of which there are some in some of our schools, parking lot and playground safety, 
school bus zones and signage and door security. The second category primarily details policies and procedures at the site to include, uh, include one of the more important issues and that's visitor management practices, uh, key and FOB building access, medical records and storage of student medications, uh, crisis management policies uh, fit here, as does internal dialogue uh, that I have with administrators uh, regard to their applicable building regarding severe weather bomb threats or any uh, need for building evacuation. And the third and final component is one of training and awareness, uh, which primarily details any crisis response training, sexual harassment, workplace violence, and uh, lockdown procedures, uh, which we practice routinely in our district. And as the graph that's in your packet indicates, our schools scored exceptionally well in all areas uh, during this assessment. The numerical scores are well in excess of the 75% benchmark required by the state mm -hmm. for accreditation, consistent with the Safe Schools Act. And our assessment is far more comprehensive than the legislation recommends and was tailored to our district. Um, ironically, with all the verbiage that's in the law, uh, what it says about site assessments is that sites must be evaluated to remove hazards. So I guess based on that, a, a person in my capacity or that the superintendent would designate could either audit one item or 200 items. So we landed on 73. I, I, uh, I do uh, review this document over the summer and usually tweak it a little bit based on some emerging trends that I see to make it uh, as applicable as possible to our schools. And as in past years, the only issues that really present, prevent us from achieving 100% in all categories are um, the desired effect to have the uh, front office and the main door of the school visible. Um, we have achieved that in many of our schools. Uh, there's a few that we have not. Uh, the second issue is uh, roof access. Some of our buildings would be nearly impossible to climb up on the roof and others it's quite easy. And when it's quite easy, that's a little bit problematic for school safety. And the third issue, um, very rarely occurs in our district and that is compliance with the fire code on the number of fire drills that each school site uh, needs to have each year and that number is 10 and with with a little prodding near the end of the year uh, we get that done by and large so um, that's a quick summation of the uh, school safety and security vulnerability assessments i want to touch on just a few additional things that um, are applicable to uh, everyday uh, practices of keeping our schools safe, and that is the audio video entry systems that were installed uh, a number of years ago with the support of the board. Those, those uh, systems are at 24 of our sites now, and the, the three that they're not, um, we have limited applicability, although we should never um, completely rule that out. But um, I can assure you, and I think you would agree, that these systems make our schools substantially safer. And our parents agree, our staff agrees, and it's, uh, it's a nice feeling to be able to walk up to these 24 sites, no matter who you are, whether you're the superintendent of schools or a board member or a parent or somebody that has no business at one of our schools. It's nice that you can't just walk up and pull the front door and walk in. So a little bit of safety goes a long ways. Our district crisis response and disaster mitigation plan is updated annually. Um, it's an up-to-date functional document. I guess that's subjective to my opinion, but that's my opinion. Our schools, as indicated, are conducting a minimum of 10 fire drills each year. And we are continually holding school lockdown drills. The fact is that you will perform in an emergency exactly like you perform when you practice. So if we don't practice them and have an emergency, uh, that's on us, specifically on me. So we practice those. Our anti-bullying anti curriculum continues to work quite well in the elementary and middle schools. It uh, provides a, uh, some immediate intervention for uh, bullying situations. Uh, the bullying complaints have continued to go down, I think, as a, one as a result of this training, but as also a result of the training, kids that maybe weren't apt to report these incidents are now reporting them to staff. So uh, what we find that is occurring on a greater basis is that a substantial amount of bullying occurs on our school buses. Um, the way we chose to uh, attempt to fix that has been very successful, and that is that if you're not aware, 
Every single one of our school buses now is equipped with video. And I must say, it's very good. It's audio, it's video, and it gives our, uh, our personnel, whether it be our transportation personnel or our schools, a tremendous advantage when following up on those complaints. Our district continues to utilize Safe to Tell um, as a uh, anonymous tip line, and we do receive numerous reports each year. Last school year, we received 14. This year, thus far, we have received three. Fortunately for us, those have been pretty minor incidents, but I would rather know about it and uh, be able to resolve it as minor than to not know about it at all. And in closing, I just want to thank you all, uh, Dr. Pilch and the board, for the uh, priority that you place in, in school safety and security, and I feel uh, fully supported in my efforts to oversee this, this department. I think we would agree that it's a, an essential component of student learning. And with that, I am through and would take any questions you might have. Board member comments, questions? Ms. Solis? Thank you for all you do to keep our kiddos safe. The safe to tell phone number, where will kids find that when they're in a school? It's on the posters. Okay. Um, it's, it's, uh, I got stumped on this once and it'll never happen again. It's 1-877-542-SAFE. That's a really good question. Right. But it is on the posters and it's on the uh, brochures as well. And it's on our website. Good answer. One of the things that that's, makes it difficult for you um, to align certain things would be the fact that we have buildings that are already built, and they're not built with the idea of security necessarily at the forefront. So front office placement, that doesn't always happen all by itself, and it would take some adjustment to make that ideal situation, like you mentioned the roof lines. Um, but certainly we appreciate the fact that you're attending to that and the attention is perhaps to help us make some changes in the future. Certainly would make some difference in terms of how we plot out the construction of subsequent buildings. So we certainly agree. We built them more aesthetically pleasing back in the 60s and 70s uh, and safety wasn't at the forefront. Obviously it is now. Yeah. Prairie Heights is uh, was the pinnacle as all of our newer schools are, yeah. but Prairie Heights has a lot of amenities that make it a really safe school. Other comments or questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Lidiak. And we have addressed some of those schools where it was possible to go ahead and make those modifications, even post um, building, so. We certainly have, like yes. Like Romero and, and others, so. No I mean, question. Um, Be the Bello, Bella, Bella, right, yeah. the Bella K3 yeah. is a perfect example of that. Exactly. Mr. Hall. Appreciate what you do, Mr. Gates. You do a great job. Uh, I've just got one question. What do you th what do you see? Pull out your crystal ball and look in the future, right? As as things are happening across the country, what do you see as our biggest obstacle to maintaining the safe level that we have now? The la I'm sorry. The last part what, of your what, question what is, is what's what do you see as the biggest obstacle or the next hurdle or the next level that we have to be cognizant of to I maintain our school? the next hurdle that that uh, that affects safety is student behavior, which we see the the level of uh, disrespect climbing each year. So what, where it may not seem like a safety issue, it really is, and the, actually the whole component is one that we have to work on daily. And we have to work at it every day as a team to continue to be safe, whether it be infrastructure or student behavior. But I feel like we, uh, in a lot of other districts around us, have a lot of good things in place to address emerging trends. And if there are emerging trends, um, hopefully we'll be able to come up with a solution okay. to resolve it. Okay, thanks. Dr. Richard. I was meeting it with a group of citizens today, and, and one of the questions that came up was um, the influence of gangs within the schools. Could you talk about that and issues that arise, or where we stand with that? I, I certainly will. It's, um, the gang influence is lower now than it has been in the 13 years I've been here. It has nothing to do with me. It does have <laughs> some things to do with some um, components that the schools have put in place. And the one thing that we did with uh, uh, the non-negotiable student dress code, for instance, is that we're not naive enough to think that the kids that are involved, um, that we're going to be able to completely pull them out of that environment because most of it has to do with, with parenting or the lack thereof or siblings or the environment they come from. But what we can do is, uh, 
ensure that our schools aren't walking billboards of uh, the, the colors that uh, are applicable to us. And as I walk through schools, I see um, really limited examples where we don't do a great job with the dress code. Uh, when I, but better yet, I'm probably not the one to know how that goes. So I engage administrators on what they're seeing with regard to gang activity. And is, is it non-existent? Absolutely not, but it's certainly in, in better shape. Um, and I don't think it's just us. I think it's other, other communities. But um, it's another issue that if we slip, we're going to have issues again. So uh, we have to stay on top of that. But I'm, I feel really comfortable that the problems have diminished with regard to the activity within our schools themselves. Thank you. Mr. Hickley. You deserve incredible credit for what you do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a thankless position, and uh, you can't win for losing. And you, you do it very diligently with great passion. And our schools and communities are much better served due to your efforts. And, and I know the board really appreciates what you do, as, as well as Dr. Pilch and in the district. So thanks very much, and, and keep doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. much. Well, this concludes our meeting tonight. This board is going to take on the challenges of the next couple of years as diligently as we possibly can because our kids certainly deserve it. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>